Today on Rappler. Thousands spent Christmas Day in evacuation centers in Mindanao due to heavy rain. Malampaya maintenance shutdown in February will mean higher power rates. Life in Chinese cities seems to return to normal after Xi Jinping scrapped China's zero-COVID policy. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak asks a homeless man if he works in business. British royals Harry and Meghan dismiss a tabloid's apology as a PR stunt. FIFA launches an investigation into how a celebrity chef gained access to the World Cup. And Korean actor Song Joong-ki finds new love. Thousands spent Christmas Day in evacuation centers in Misamis provinces as continuous rain spawned flooding and landslides. Police say at least two people died in a landslide in Oroqueta City in Misamis Occidental on Christmas Eve. Gingoog City in Misamis Oriental was hit hardest, where some 6,900 families had to be evacuated by army, police, and local rescue teams. The Army's 58th Infantry Battalion reports the evacuations started at night when families were preparing for the traditional Noche Buena. Gingoog Mayor Eric Cañosa declared the eastern Misamis Oriental City under a state of calamity on Christmas Day to allow the local government to provide relief aid to evacuees from 19 of the city's 79 barangays. State Weather Bureau Pag-asa raises the alert levels in Mindanao and the Visayas because of heavy rainfall. The Department of Energy urges the public to conserve energy as the Malampaya Natural Gas Facility will undergo maintenance shutdown in February 2023. Energy Secretary Rafael Lotilia says Malampaya would have its scheduled maintenance work from February 4 to 18, 2023. During this period, the supply of gas for Malampaya will temporarily stop and power plants switch to more expensive alternative sources of fuel. Lutilia says the DOE could not yet estimate the price increase. The shutdown also comes during elevated power prices in the global market. Lutilia admits there's not much the Philippine government can do to soften the impact from global market forces. DOE officials say power outages are unlikely to occur due to the maintenance works, but warn the dry season may trigger yellow alerts due to increased demand. After years of ruthless anti-coronavirus curbs, China President Xi Jinping scraps the country's zero-COVID policy in the face of protests and a widening outbreak. After the initial shock of the policy U-turn, life seems to be returning closer to normal. Subway trains in Beijing and Shanghai are packed, while some major traffic arteries in the two cities jam with slow-moving cars as residents commute to work. Crowds throng the holiday season at Shanghai Disneyland and Beijing's Universal Studios, queuing up for rides in Christmas-themed outfits. China is the last major country to move toward treating COVID as endemic. Its containment measures slowed the $17 trillion economy to its lowest growth rate in nearly half a century, disrupting global supply chains and trade. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak faces criticism for his seemingly out-of-touch remarks when he asked a homeless man at a charity whether he worked in business and wanted to get into the finance industry. Sunak was serving breakfast at a homeless shelter in London when he began chatting with a man who identified himself as Dean. Deputy Leader of the Opposition Labour Party Angela Rayner posted a clip of the exchange on Twitter, calling it excruciating while Labour lawmaker Bill Esterson called Sunak out of touch. His ascent to the British Premiership makes Sunak the richest occupant of number 10 Downing Street at a time when the country is struggling with a cost-of-living crisis. Britain's Prince Harry and his wife Meghan dismisses an apology by British tabloid The Sun as a PR stunt. This comes after television presenter Jeremy Clarkson wrote in his Sun column I lie there dreaming of the day when she is made to parade naked through the streets, while the crowds chant and throw lumps of excrement at her. The Sun says they regret the publication of this article and are sincerely sorry, adding the article had been removed from its website and archives. Clarkson says he was horrified to have caused so much hurt and would be more careful in the future. 
The couple's spokesperson says, We wouldn't be in this situation if the son did not continue to profit off and exploit hate, violence, and misogyny. A true apology would be a shift in their coverage and ethical standards for all. Unfortunately, we're not holding our breath. Harry and Meghan's camp adds the son hasn't contacted them to say sorry. FIFA launches an investigation into how individuals gained undue access to the pitch following the World Cup final after images and videos of Turkish celebrity chef Nasret Gokce celebrating with Argentina's players went viral on social media. Gokce posted videos and photos on his Instagram page of himself with Argentina's players after their win over France in the finals. He was also photographed holding the World Cup trophy. FIFA's website says the trophy can only be touched by a very select group of people, including former winners and heads of state. FIFA says following a review, the appropriate internal action will be taken. Gokce went viral in 2017 for his theatrical style of sprinkling salt on his steaks and is known online as Salt Bay. Korean actor Song Joong Ki has found a new love. In a statement released December 26, Song's agency, Hyzeum Studio, confirmed he is in a new relationship. The statement comes after news reports emerged that Song was dating a British woman. Song was previously married to his descendants of the Sun co-star Song Hye Kyo. They filed for divorce in 2019, nearly two years of marriage. In October, Song was rumored to be dating Space Sweepers co-star Kim Tae-ri. Both actors' agencies denied the rumors, calling them completely false. And that's today's wrap. I'm Ralph Rivas. Thanks for watching. Click the link below for the full story. Follow us on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you.